Hi everybody, Zach here, and welcome to the final lesson in the first section of this RTS tutorial series. In this lesson, we'll be covering setting up map boundaries. This will prevent our camera from going off map. So, I just want to say congratulations on making it this far. If you have any questions or any concerns, please let me know. Please tell me what's been working in the series and what hasn't been. So I know for the next section and the sections after that, what you guys want me to include. After this uh, section is done, I will release one video where I'll go over the code of the section entire, just again as a refresher. And when I say code, I mean script. Um, and I'll also release a preview for what we will be doing in section two. That said, fire up the uh, Unreal Editor and let's get started. So here we are back in the UE4 editor for the final bit on our camera setup. While well, the camera is essentially set up, we have some last little bits and bobs to take care of in the world around it, particularly the fact that we can go through the map like this. Now, between this video and the last video, I've gone back and I've done some changes to the code. One of the changes might be something you want, and the other changes are something you definitely don't want. So if you see something that doesn't line up in the code, um, and it relates to a checkbox, your code is probably right. Mine is currently intentionally wrong, or script that is. So I changed the edge scroll speed is one thing, and that's maybe something you wanna change too. I found 15 was just a bit too fast for my taste. So I've changed it to 10. Um, you can pick whatever number you want. I arbitrarily picked 15 last time, I meant to say that. And I made some other changes in here and the basic movement in this area, but I've only done that to show you a bug. You don't need to change anything. If the issue that I have comes up, you know, comes up in yours as well, then you might wanna check if you have those checked or not. So what we're gonna do today, as I've already mentioned, is, ooh, sorry, is we are going to, let me just close that out. We are going to set up the boundaries. Now, let's think about that for a moment. What do we need to set up the boundaries? Could we put in a visible wall around here? Essentially, yes. But what is that wall made of? Is it going to be something like one of these cubes just with no mesh or texture? Well, theoretically, yeah, we could do it that way. You know, all that really matters is what the collision preset is here. And the problem when we think about that is the pawn has no collision preset, so you tell it not to collide with anything. So if we, let's go to custom on this for a minute. I'm going to undo it in a second. If we open up the custom collision settings for this random cube, cube number 14, we can see we have different uh, types of collision responses. We have trace responses and object responses. Now, object are things in the world, physical objects in the world, so to speak, they get rendered in. And trace is a little bit more complex than that. It's what we are, it's how we see things, how far we can, it, it's, honestly, it's hard to explain that one, and I'm, I'm not going to try to break it down, because I probably do a really bad job of it, and offend people who know this material better than I do. The other part we need to consider is this ignore, overlap, and block. So, ignore means that the, you ignore whatever is happening there, so, you know, if a camera were to bump into this, it's set to block. Our camera is currently set to ignore, however, so it does nothing. By the way, both items have to have the same setting for it to work. So if you do ignore on both the camera and on our camera here, they just pass through each other. If we have overlap, you can trigger an overlap event. If we have block, it can't get through. So we're going to need to put something that is unique to the game world and our object responses that can block. And we don't want to be the pawn because we won't be able to go through our pawns when we spawn in NPCs. We don't want it to be vehicles, because we might use vehicles for NPC. Actually, we will, but they'll be classed under pawns. Um, you know, we don't want the world static, because, you know, again, we're going to travel through that when we're actually in the game. What we want is something new. So let's just return this back to the default. Close that out. And let's go to that window I closed a second ago, our project settings window. And in project settings, let's go down to collision. And in here, you can see we have our trace channels and our object channels. Between both of these, we are allowed 
another 18 more custom channels. That might seem like a lot, but that's 18 between both of these. Those can add up real quick. And considering what we already have here, things can, a lot of things are already there. So when you want to add things to this area, you typically want to make them as wide reaching as you can. And by which I mean that it can be used for multiple things. Now I will say for some of the stuff I'm going to add, like the thing today, it's only going to be used for one thing. And that is, we are going to add a object channel. So click new object channel. And we're going to name it map, sorry my cat box is on, map <coughs> boundaries. And we'll set the default response to block. Hit accept, you'll notice it adds it in there. All right, so we're nearly there. Now I'm just going to pull back a tiny bit. And I am going to go into my volumes. And I am going to look for a blocking volume. So an invisible volume used to block actors. I'm just going to set it over here for a second. That's actually not where I want to set it at all. So I am going to I'll remove it and set it right here. Now that it's set, I am going to uh, size it so how I want. I'm actually going to change the transform a bit, move it over here so it's behind that wall, and we'll be good to go on setting this up. So in terms of setting this up, all I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my um, uh, scale. Sorry, I couldn't think of what it was called for a second. And just drag this out. That is way too long. I forgot it wasn't centered. And I forgot I'm not using... Uh, you know what? I'm just going to be lazy and do this correctly. There we go. Does not need to be that big, does it? Oh, sorry. I'm on the wrong side. I need to be on the... There we go. I'm just going to move that over there. Move it out a tiny bit. I really don't want it overlapping the wall. The wall is that little part there. Just so we can turn off wireframe. If you click wireframe, go to lit. You can see that outer wall is right there. Kind of want it just past the wall. And now let's go to that left side view again. Going to switch back to my scale. And I'm, whoop. Sorry. Hit the wrong one. And I'm going to just make it a bit bigger. Drag it down here. A little bit bigger than I wanted it, but hey, it works. I'm going to control uh, W it and drag its duplicate over to this side. Oops, sorry. I'm now going back to top perspective. You can do this however you really want to do this. This really doesn't matter how you set it up. Just as long as it covers above and below and out in the length of the wall. I'm going to control W again. So for this time, I'm going to switch to rotate, and I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And then I'm just going to drag it over here, and I'm going to set it here. And we're going to do another one of these, again, control W, and this time on the back side of it, or the bottom side of it. And you notice I now have four blocking volumes here. I'm going to shift select them. So if I took the top one, hold shift down for those who don't know how to do this and click the last one, I'll select all the ones in between. I realize that many people watching this probably know how to do that, but you know, teaching at a university, the number of students I know who don't know how to do that is a bit shocking. You can see as they're all highlighted, they're not exactly evenly spaced. It really doesn't matter. So long as it's covering, as long as there's no gaps in it, we are good. So I'm gonna go down to our collision preset. I'm gonna ignore invisible wall, and I am going to Sorry, I'm going to extend that out. I'm going to set it to custom instead, because what I want to change is the object type. World static doesn't work for this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to map boundaries. And I'm going to set it to block the camera. And we're going to ignore visibility. We, want, we don't want to be able to see it, so we want to ignore that. But I want it to block the camera. All right, so maybe we're set up. Hint, we're not, but let's see what happens if we try anyway. Oh, no. Yeah, we can go straight through it. So, clearly not set up yet. So, if you caught earlier in the uh, lesson, I said both the item that we want to 
have the response and the thing that it's responding to have to have the same setting. So right now the camera is set to ignore all. We need it to block map boundaries. So we're going to open our camera up and we are going to find our sphere and we're going to change this. We are going to do custom. We are going to set to ignore all by clicking this button here. And then we are going to undo part of that with map boundaries. We'll set it to block. Compile and save. And do you think it's ready yet? Again, hint, nope, not really. But let's test it. See what happens. Still not working. Hmm. Well, in fact, there's two errors. Now, I'm going to... I'm just going to fix one of them first, the main one. Um, and if you've been following along with the tutorials and haven't made the changes I made just for this one, you won't run into this issue. So if we go back into here, the actual issue is what it's looking for is the root component. The root component of this is scene. And as you can see, scene has no collision. If we go in here, all we have is it can affect navigation. Well, that's not what we want. So I'm just going to collapse this to make sure that everything comes with it. I'm going to take sphere and I'm going to move it on top of scene like we did scene with scene in the very first episode. Notice that floating movement pawn comes to the top. That's fine. We can get rid of scene, actually. And now we just have our sphere. And look, hey, it's set to block our map boundary still. Good. We hit save and we hit play. Uh-oh. Something went wrong there. Well, let's work out what went wrong there. And I'm, Actually, that never has happened to me before. I feel weird saying that. Ah, so yeah, I, uh, I forgot something, actually. When you delete scene like that, you have to change what you're rotating. We're no longer going to rotate the sphere. We're going to rotate the spring arm instead. I am sorry about that. I just had to look at my spring arm to make sure I wasn't going crazy on the other one. Um, all right. Now, if you hit play, it's still not going to work, but hey, at least the spring arm is in the right spot. The reason it isn't working is, as I said, oops, sorry, joys of that edge scroll. As I said, if you don't have a sweep set, it's not going to work. It's also the part that's going to tell you that it has to be the root component of the object that is... Um, it's a uh, checking that root component in the original version was just seen it couldn't see the sphere so we go back here and hit play now that we set sweep back up we hit the wall i can't go any further now that wall might be a little bit further away than i want it to be but it really isn't if we set it right on the uh, edge there like right on the wall when you get here the camera stops spinning and it's like oh, i still have room to see especially when you're on Oops, sorry, let me get to the right spot. Especially when it's here. If you get blocked here, you're going to go, why, why can't I go any more forward? There's still more area here. It's because the sphere is blocked, but the spring arm is so far away. Well, that actually sets up our camera completely. We are now done with... Yeah, we're done with it. Yeah, it's all set up. Let me close out that. Make sure your sweeps are activated. And we'll go through the code in the summary video I'm going to do a little bit later this week. Um, or next week, so I'm actually filming this video a bit early. But yeah, everything is set up. Our camera is ready. We will, we aren't done with the player controller yet, but our camera is done. So let's close out our camera. And as a last little bit, let's do some housekeeping. And then I'm going to just go to my cheat sheet one and set up my content browser with everything that we need. So sorry for that beep, that joys of Discord. I'm going to create a folder called game settings, and a folder called player. I have other folders we'll be adding. We have library, lighting, and uh, library and lighting, which we'll be adding in the next session, se uh, section, sorry, and also next uh, lesson too. And then after that, we'll have resources and meshes to add in. But let's move our items or our blueprints to the correct folders. So our pawn and our controller are going to go to player and we want to move not copy and our rts game mode uh bp here will go to game settings again move not copy because we moved them oh sorry let's go back here can save all 
Because we moved it, let's test it, make sure everything still works. We can zoom in, zoom out, we can... Oops, sorry, I would have if I actually held the right button down. We can reset the zoom, we can pan, we can reset our pan, we can scroll, we have block on that side, we can edge scroll. So you can see the boundary on this side is a little bit closer to the wall than it has on the other side. But yeah, everything is set up. So, next time we will do a review where I'll go over all the code we did for this. And then... After the, and an introduction to section two. After that, we will get straight into setting up our game time, our day and night cycle, and our HUD. As always, like likes are much appreciated. Comments let me know what works in this tutorial series and what doesn't, and what you would like to see or not see. And remember to hit that subscribe and notify bell so you know when the next video is out. I hope you've enjoyed this section, and I look forward to having you in the next section of this tutorial series. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.